there's some guys that come in and they look around and they think they just gonna jump out there and say, okay, jump stop and you need to do this and you need to do that. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not that way, man. And we just sit back in the summertime and we work the guys out and it's and they see all the problems and I'm like, hey coach, can you you wanna go take him home and drive him an hour and a half home? And then they see the grind and they're like, oh, okay, this is uh this ain't what I signed up for. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and I'm excited, as always, because you all know the premise of our platform here is ultimately to focus on providing tangible strategies for student athletes to see be, to succeed beyond their degree. And uh, if you have not taken a chance to subscribe, I would encourage you to subscribe to the platform wherever you stream your podcast. But without further ado, today I'm I'm excited to to bring forward a, a, a guest who is a who's not only he's a, he's a father he's he's a mentor and and he's he's a coach and and the last thing I'm just gonna add on here a father mentor husband I didn't forget I didn't forget husband and coach and uh, you you might have might have seen him before and he also is 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 the star from Last Chance You Basketball without further ado Coach John Mosley Coach how we doing today. John, doing okay, man. Uh, staying busy, staying uh, pretty active with uh, reaching out to those who reached out to us about the show. Uh, you know, it's a Netflix docu series that it, I think it's been featured. Uh, it's this is the sixth season, and they mm -hmm. they decided to do basketball. So uh, previously it was football in some smaller towns, and then they did went up to Oakland uh, for the fifth season. They chose basketball, so. Uh, and it's it's done well. I think it's had some of the biggest numbers here uh, in the last month or two. Um, so we're grateful for it. Um, for whatever reason, man, it's kind of created a little bit of a phenomenon. You know, we we uh, I've kind of been here forever, and everybody's like, <laughs> "Well, who is this guy?" You know, I've never heard of him. It's like there's a lot of people in the world, you know, John doing great things, and I just was fortunate that they allowed me. They they provided a platform for people to see what we're doing or, and actually see what's going on with, with our little world. You know, everybody's got their little world, man. Mm -hmm. We all got a little world and we all think it's important. And uh, we had a world that we thought was important and we were trying to do work and help young men. Cause I'm a basketball coach at the community college at East LA community college. And there's 111, I believe community colleges in California. Wow. And we're just, you know, we're just a speck in the water, you know. And so for them to come and decide to film us and highlight us. And now we're kind of not just nationally, but internationally. I I get a lot of mail from or emails from the international kind of more than I do from the state. So wow. uh, the, the, the impact that the show has had. We there's a, there's tons of people that that do a lot of great work, man. But. But uh, so we've just been staying busy, continuing to share the message that, hey, there's there's other groups out there like us or the work that we do. And they've asked, what are some of your techniques and strategies? And I'm like, I don't know, man. It's just loving. On, <laughs> it's just loving on people. You know, it's just having compassion for others. I think that's where it all stems from. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Would you say that you think that's something that gets lost just just in the coaching game and even doing the work that you do? Because just like we talked earlier, talking about you building, basically you building young men for lifelong success. Do you think love, the love is something that, that's lost? So uh, here's what I think happens. And a lot of people ask me, uh, how come I won't take a, you know, when am I going to take this job or that job? Or I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people hitting you up. So I think what happens, man, and, and this is what I'm fearful of, is, and, and those coaches, they do a great job. And not to say that they don't, but when you get to a, a level where you're being compensated at an astronomical amount, or your compensation is based on wins and losses, sometimes your pure focus can be based on wins and losses, and, it lost, wins and, losses, and you lose uh, your purpose. We all get into that coaching, like, man, I'm gonna help kids. I'm gonna try to help them win and 
we don't we never get into coaching and say man i'm just trying to go out there and win a, a championship no we jump into coaching because we love the interaction we love that space we love uh that locker room environment you know that's what we missed that's what i missed at least i missed the locker room environment and then i went back and i was able to have relationships and kind of mentor through basketball the carrot is basketball uh to kind of to kind of reel them in but there's so many lessons you can teach them basketball you can teach them uh you can mentor them and all that because they're going to listen to you because the carrot is basketball um but we lose that we lose it a lot because man when you're uh you you know when feeding your family depends on wins and losses sometimes you drop the ball on uh i need to make sure that i take care of this kid's well-being really you could care less you're like look i got my family's got to eat and if we don't win games we're going to get fired and i don't care what any university says it comes down all the universities it comes down to wins and losses if you if you're losing at a at a a high rate Mm-hmm. At some point, it, you know, sometimes they may, it, may let it draw, drag on for a couple of years. But if, if you look at the highest level, a lot of, you know, if it's after three years, if you can't get it done, you're fired. And I think that's for me, that that's what kind of hits on when you ask the question, is it being lost? I think that's what happens. It's not that any other coach, it, it, you know, a coach doesn't care, but he has to prioritize what's important. And. Sometimes it's, it's, it's some coaches do a great job of prioritizing, still being mm-hmm. compassionate and caring, although there's pressure to win. For me, my salary is based on uh, it's based on teaching. So I'm a, a full time faculty member now. So I was blessed with a tenure position now. Uh, it takes a little, you know, I put the pressure on myself to win because I know it's going to position all these young men to be in a better place. But uh uh, I think that's what happens, and then that that's where we lose maybe some of the the uh, uh, you know focus on the individual and really having that compassion because we're thinking about winning, man. We got to win games so my family can eat. So uh, it, I would say it 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 shows up missing sometimes, and you know it, I mean I'm looking at the transfer portal, man. Mm. It's like over two thousand players in the transfer portal. Ooh. And and I'm I'm just like man, uh, something has been lost. There's a connection that's that's missing. There's some connection missing because there shouldn't be so many young men deciding. Well, I'm leaving. Like you mean to tell me there wasn't enough connection that kept you in 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 place or kept you at the school that ultimately signed you to a scholarship where you guys had this perfect marriage, right? Mm. I, on announcement day, oh, I'm signing with so and so, 100% committed, and then a year later, it's just like I'm out of there. You know, it's uh, mm. it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty sad. So yeah, there's a the transfer portal kind of gives you a heads up, and then our our culture, uh, the way our young men are now, everybody wants to, you know, they want to create a dream team. So, uh, but that's another conversation. <laughs> So, so coach, talk a little bit about that, about just the, the culture aspect of like what, like what you've done around, around just building your culture out. Because I, I was, I was on a panel like a few weeks ago and one of the gentlemen said, like with the transfer portal, the majority of people that transfer out, it's not even because of play time. More yeah. like, even though, even though that's the first thing that I would think. Um, but, but just, just talk a little bit about like the, the, the culture that you all have put in place, because I know there's a lot of coaches out there that, you know, they're, they're still struggling trying to figure out, you know, how, how to put together a culture. Yeah, I think we, we, we're in a space now where you have to you got to go meet those young men where they're at. And a lot of times we try to say, hey, look what we have to offer. You guys need to uh, come along and jump on board or you don't get all these great resources. You don't get all this. Well, I think. I think at, at some right now we're in a culture. Now I'm not going to kiss nobody's butt, you know, <laughs> but I think we we have to go meet them and say, okay, what are your goals? What are your dreams? And now here's the template for it. And I think we have to be intentional about making sure that that's a, a kind of a daily focus or a, a weekly focus. We got to be intentional about letting them know that we not just in the recruiting phase where we say, hey, okay, what is your dreams? What do you want? Let us help you meet those goals. And now when they walk through the door, they say, wait a minute, I thought he was going to spend all this time with me. I thought he was going, you know, and so I think 
uh, for me, what you know, is being intentional. And not that it can't change tomorrow, but I think right now what has worked is being intentional about really having compassion about what and be invested in what is going on in their lives. And then once that happens, they see uh, that there's a, uh, that, that now they can listen in to what we're trying to, what we want. So once they know that we invested in them and we care about them, now they'll kind of fall in line with, with, with what we want to help them meet those goals. And, you know, I text the guys out every day, winning is essential, you know, and I, I kind of got, I started a project, you know, I'm, we were, I'm writing this book with all of these points on winning is essential. And what does that look like? And I'm not just talking about winning on the court. It's in the classroom. Is, is it's winning out in our faith, uh, but winning is essential. And now we can start to press on like, man, you're going to win at everything you do. You're going to win your attitude. You're going to wake up and you're going to win. Mm-hmm. We got to win. We got to win our mind. We got to win the day. We got to win. You got to be competitive about uh, distractions. You know, I mean, make it a competition. I'm not getting distracted because I'm Joe Hampton and I'm not letting nothing distract. You know, you got to be com- competitive, man. And so we take that uh, and we drive that home. So I think, but I think first, before even talking about what my philosophy is and what my culture is, I think is allowing them to understand. I think the days, and I hate to say it, you know, we're old school because I my, my mentor was old school. The old school coaches where it's my way or the highway. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I'm saying? I think we got to manipulate the situation and say, okay, what is you, what, what do you want to do? What is your path? Okay, and then I think we have to uh, be intentional about letting them know, like, look, we we want to we want you to meet those goals, but guess what? You got to hop on our highway, and then our highway is going. Then we'll take a detour to your place, but first we got to be all on the same highway first, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what do you want, and what do you need? What are your needs? Uh, and then we got to flip it and say, okay, for your wants and your needs to happen, you got to hop on this. But we have to be intentional and know. We got to have a compassion and know where they're at and what's going on in their lives and what's going to tick, cause them to tick to respond poorly, what's going to get them. And that takes work on our part. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I think we, you know, sometimes we miss that. We, we kind of feel like, hey, uh, if they don't do it my way, they out of the door. I'm the one with scholarship money. I'm the one with... You know, I'm the one that's providing all of this opportunity. Uh, but if you say as a coach, well, I want to be the guy that makes the impact. All right. If you say that, that you're the coach, you're the guy that wants to make the impact, then then I think then you got to go meet him. But if you want to be the guy and say, we got this great program, those guys need to be privileged that they're in our program, then fine, go ahead and sit back. But you won't have that impact on that young man that's struggling. You won't be able to turn lives around. I in, in my opinion. That that's just how I do it. I, I I don't I have a problem turning lives around unless I'm invested and I go to their home and I see what they're going through. I see what happened, what how, what it took for them to get to school today. You know, in terms of bus fare or train fare, uh what if are they hungry? Did the parents did they have some type of abuse at home? And I'm not talking about physical is some type of verbal or some type of neglect or uh, is there abandonment going on? You got to find out all those things instead of saying, oh, this kid is a basket or a head case. And and then I think that can uh, once they know that you love on them, then they'll they'll love what 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 your mission, what your goal is. Um, at least that's what worked for me. How do you draw the line between like because because, OK, like in. In the show or in in the docu series, you know there there's a part where you know you're you're in the office and you're and you're praying with Joe Hampton, but then just just later as, as the show progresses, how do you draw the line between ministry, building men, and ultimately just knowing like when to when to take a step back and it's like okay, you know I, I like I have to I have to step back, I have to let them learn here, or you know I have, I have to let what's gonna happen happen here. You know, uh, I would like to say I, I would like to give myself um, more credit and say that it's a it's a feel. Uh, mm-hmm. th- there is a spirit of discernment that 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 that's granted. All right. So I, I don't know if I can even coach basketball. But what I'd say, the gift that God has given me is a spirit of discernment. And I think the more that I stay connected with 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 
what what God's intentions are, what God wants. So he wants us to have compassion. He wants us to be uh, excellent at what we do and passion. The more I can stay in his presence, the more I can kind of know what to do and what he would do in that situation. So I think I think that is is the best place to be because everybody says, oh, you were great. How did you do that? And I'm thinking like, I don't know, man. I just you got to stay in prayer, man. These dudes, these kids is off the chain. <laughs> you got to stay in prayer. And I think that's where it's at. Like the moment when I walked around, everybody's like, that was a great technique. I was like, man, that wasn't no technique, man. I was praying, man. You know, <laughs> I'm walking around praying like, Lord, what do I do right now? You know, I stopped practice. And then I thought to myself, ah, man, I really didn't want to run them at that moment. And so I'm praying and it takes prayer. It takes a sense of discernment to know when to cut in and when to cut out. You got to know and do enough research and do enough homework to know what's really going on. Like Joe wants to play basketball, Deshaun, Casey, all these guys want to play basketball. They love the game. They want to be successful. So why would they sabotage that? Hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's trying to get some type of attention. Why? Because they want us to know about something else that's going. They want us to know, well, you just really need to know me or know, you know, and guess what we do in society, in our society? We don't have time for that. You better get your act together. Well, you know what? You're not going to have an impact on Joe Hampton if you don't take time. And if you just write him off and say, you know what? I don't have time for Joe. So uh, that's just me, my call. And I'm not asking everybody to do it. That's just the discernment that I have. That's the compassion that I've tried, that I just take on. That's the work that I take on. You know, you don't have to take it on and it, and, and, and you don't have to feel guilty for, I mean, your deal may be, look, it's, it's this way and it's cut and dry. And if he responds a certain way, then I don't have to tolerate it. And you don't in your space, you don't. But for me, this is what, you know, this is what I'm doing. You know, hey, you could be a, I tell people, all, you could be a millionaire, a billionaire. And if you're calling this to, if it's to just donate, then donate. That's, that's your call. For me, my purpose is to make sure I really get to the root of, of why the poor responses are happening. And so I think it's just staying in prayer, staying in, staying within the, 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 the mission. You know what I'm saying? The mission is not, if it's about winning games, yeah, I, something, I probably got to cut cut my losses and get rid of Joe, you know, but you got to stay within the mission and realize, man, if I would have let him go, you know, no telling what would have happened with Joe, you know, uh, no telling what, with all the things he had going on. And the thing about it is I took responsibility. I told him I would never give up on him. And sometimes they want to see if you're going to give up on him. Like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He said he won't give up on me. And you know, ain't that sad, man, mm -hmm. when, when, you got people that you mentor it and that you try to help and they continue to sabotage just to prove that you're not going to help me. You know, you said you're going to help me, but I want to see if you're going to help me. Okay. You're going to help me. And they want to see to what depths you're going to help them. And I'm going to let them know, like, look, man, you ain't going to keep trying me. You're not going <laughs> to keep testing me, but I'm not giving up on you. The only way is you going to have to give up on yourself. So I'm never going to give up on them. Um, uh, but if, if, if it becomes, and there's just different spaces where you have to learn how, when to discipline, because you, you have a, you have a feel for why they're acting out. They can be acting out because they, they don't want to do the work. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or they, they can be acting out because there's something going on in their home lives. There's an anger. There's a, uh, you know, Deshaun, I just, Deshaun is in a depressed I don't want to do anything today because I want to, I want to grieve today. And so maybe I just leave Deshaun alone because I kind of get a sense that he just wants to grieve today. So let Deshaun grieve and just ignore all his negative behavior. And then, you know what? Sometimes that grieving may only happen 10 minutes, right? And then he, he wakes up out of it because he sees we're, we're continuing to move forward and we're not, we're not uh, paying any attention to the negative behavior. So once he sees that, he's like, you know what? Let me just hop back in. Okay. I've cleared my head. And guess what? I've allowed him to grieve for 10 minutes. I've allowed him to react and respond. And I didn't lose the day. Sometimes you can lose the day. Mm. You can lose everything by, by responding to the poor and negative behavior. 
Well, I allowed him to grieve all by himself. Yeah, he's still around the other guys. But I grabbed all the other guys and I pulled them to positive behavior. I said, let's go. Da, 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 da. If Deshaun doesn't want to do it, I, 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 uh, without saying anything, I had the response of, we're going to ignore Deshaun today, fellas, and we're just going to keep it pushing. And all the guys respected the fact that we kept going and we didn't respond to Deshaun. Well, 10 minutes later, Deshaun, he jumps back on the train, right? But if I would have responded at that moment, I could we could have lost the day. We could have said, okay, we're disciplining you. We could have. So sometimes you do have to stop and say, okay, we're just disciplining the whole day. And then sometimes you just got to ignore the behavior and keep it pushing. And then they'll hop back in and they self-examine. They kind of self-examine themselves and they take a look. That's what happened when I was silent. They all self-examined after a while. I was like, you know what? First, they thought I was crazy and I was nuts. And then they kind of <laughs> sat there long enough to realize that, you know what? We might be nuts. We might have the issue. We're sitting up here not following direction. When we and now we're sitting, we're standing here not playing basketball when we should be playing basketball. They sat there long enough to realize that you know what we want to just play basketball, and and I think it's just a feel, man. So and and part of that feel comes from discernment. Part of that discernment comes from staying in 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 the presence of God and kind of what He wants. And and how you do that, man? You got to stay in prayer. You gotta you gotta stay in His Word. You know, in the Bible. And and so that that's that's kind of what I do. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. So, Coach, I I want to hear just your thoughts on, or j- just just to bring a, a a level playing field or understanding on how difficult it is just fighting to either make it through junior college and then get to the next level, or well, well, yeah, just talk about that because I think a lot of people don't understand because I played at the junior college level. And I never even realized just if we talk stats and numbers, how difficult it is to go from one level to the next. But but can you just talk about what some of these guys are going through on a day to day that a lot of people have no idea about? Yeah. <clears throat> and, and and I'll talk about the, the performance later. But you, you. So they only highlighted about four guys. Right. It was like K.J. Malik, Deshaun and Joe. But there's 15 guys on that roster that all have major issues that they're going through. You know, you got kids getting put out of their home and still trying to, you, you know, there's a reason why they're they're all here. So something happened to prevent them, at least the guys that are with me, either athletically, they weren't ready, either academically, they weren't ready. So they had to go to the community college, which uh, most most every student is in California. Any student, I don't care. Even if you don't graduate from high school, you're, you're you can be admitted and you can go to community college. So, mm-hmm. you have those students. Uh, you have uh, students uh, like a Joe Hampton who he was on the top of the world. He he blows out one knee, blows out another knee, and he starts to spiral, and then he gets into legal issues. There's so many variables that go on, right? So, they're trying to come out of that space. So whatever deficiency brought them to the community college they're trying to unravel out of that not only that is they're trying to survive every day so it's just like a normal they're trying to in california we don't have any scholarships so that's number one so all of the guys are paying tuition now most of them you know if they're california residents they get the fee waiver and then financial aid pays for it uh they they come out pretty good but uh they still yet and still you're paying for to go to community college. You're paying to go to college. Now you're paying, there's no dorms. There's a couple schools with dorms out here. Out of 111, there's about five schools with dorms. So everybody's traveling from home or they have to facilitate their own housing situation. I can't even facilitate it. So a lot of people say, can you, what kind of housing situation? You? I'm like, man, I don't have a housing situation. They got to figure it out. I may direct them a little bit, but mm. you know, uh, but they have to figure it out. They got to pay their own rent. They got to pay their food. There's no meal plans or anything here. So you think about those spaces. We get guys that get full financial aid, but then guess what? Mom needs money for rent. And so now they're still in the struggle space and they're trying to be a full-time student in order to get out of here. Okay. To graduate, you got to graduate in two years. That's if you're here in two years, you don't have time to sit around. The, there's a degree 
progress at the NCAA level. You have to have a percentage of your degree done by the time you transfer, right? And the more you go full-time, we call it our clock starting, right? So once you go full-time, your clock starts. At that point, your clock starts. And the, the, the semesters, the amount of semesters that you go, that counts towards your degree progress. So let's say I, I go fall and spring semester. If I go fall and spring semester to the NCAA, they're going to look and say, you should be one year towards having your degree. And if not, you're not going to be eligible at the NCAA school. So, mm -hmm. so we have to make sure at the community college that if they go full time, fall and spring, that they have to be done one. So we can't just put them in any crap classes. Back in the day, you know, the 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 knock was the community college. You used to be able to put anybody in, uh, just basket weaving, get them through, and then they transfer. <laughs> on, you know, but what happens is when you transfer to the NCAA school now, the NCAA wants to see that if you went to school one year at the community college, that you have one year of your degree uh, towards your degree done, which means the classes that you've taken at the at the junior college have to match uh, the classes towards your degree at the four year. So mm -hmm. that's what we talk about. You have to have your degree progress done. So now, a student has to get math, English, science done at the community college level, right, in order to transfer. So it's that much harder. And guess what? In order to meet those demands and those requirements, you, now it's not just take 12 units. And you say, well, take less units. Well, you have to be a full-time student in order mm -hmm. to compete. To compete. Mm -hmm. So now you have to take full-time classes. And if you're taking the full-time classes, normally it's not just 12 units standard semester, you got to take 15 to 18 so that you're taking a, enough units so that when you transfer, you your progress towards degree, you'll meet that. And so now there's an extra stress from an academic standpoint that you have to meet. So we got that stress. Deshaun is dri driving an hour and a half to come play, play for us. We got guys catching the train. So and you say, well, why won't they go to the place that's closer to them? Well, they felt more comfortable with what we were doing. And they knew that if they came with us and they did what they were supposed to do, they would transfer out. So there's a young man who says, I want that opportunity because that looks better for me. That's the best community college situation. So they're making a sacrifice to say, hey, I'm going to travel an hour to get to that place with no meal plan, uh, you know, no gas money. Uh, take a full load of classes, then have to deal with Coach Mosley, who's trying to run a real program, <laughs> like, you know, who's who's trying to make us lift weights, you know, pre and post game and trying to do detailed things that I know would help him be successful at the next level, trying to make him go to study hall, holding him accountable in the classroom. So now the, all those difficulties on top of whatever exterior things that are going on. Okay, mm -hmm. I got a, I got a case going on uh so the the dynamics there there's no support okay yeah you can find tutor on campus but there's no designated support if you go to a university the university the athletic department is going to know we have our tutors we have our ac academic athletic counselors specific for just our team or just athletics and so here at the community college uh we don't have specifics we have those resources on campus but it's not specific to athletics. It's kind of for the broad campus. So it's not a, at our disposal. So you have all of those dynamics, including you got to be a great, you got to be an adult. You know, you get to the university level, uh, you got meal plans, you got training tables, you got athletic, uh, uh, you know, a specific strength and conditioning coach. I mean, there's so many variables that we're trying to make it myself. I'm trying to bring the program element which is strength and conditioning, the basketball experience, the academic experience. I'm trying to make that like a four-year program, okay? So I'm extending myself because us coaches, we got to do more because we don't have a strength and conditioning coach. We don't have this and that, but we're providing that. And then the young men, they have to live out the exterior things that they normally won't have to live out at the, at the four-year. 
So you say, why is Joe Hampton throwing chairs? Well, he's worried about paying rent also. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He's worried about the legal battle that he has. Now, he brought that on himself, but on top of the legal battle that he brought on himself, he's got to worry about paying rent. He's got to worry about eating. He's got to worry about all those different type of things. So, uh, and then, you know, maybe his parents are asking for money and, you know, he li he's living across the country. He's probably in a living situation that he doesn't want to be in, but he has to live in it because it's the cheapest. Um, so those are all the, all the variables. And the guys are doing well at the next level because the adversity that they had to go through and that they got through, it's nothing compared, you know, it's nothing to compare to what they, the adversity at the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow, I love how you, I love how you really broke that down for the people. I, I, I really, I really love how you painted it. You paint, painted a pretty clear picture, coach. You painted, mm -hmm. painted a pretty clear picture. So now there was a, so there was a few scenes in, in the docu-series where you were out there sweeping the floor, coach. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Talk about it. You're the, you're, 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 you're the head coach of the program. And just like you just said, you know, there's some things that you all don't have access to. But you, you didn't have to sweep the floor. Why why did you sweep the floor, Coach Mosley? Uh, well, first, it, it kind of it kind of relaxes me. That's, that's one. I, I realized after I started doing it that it does, it kind of relaxes me. It breaks some of the nervous tension down. And I can kind of collect my thoughts as I do it. But seriously, man, every – Every little thing matters to me. You know, we're talking about game day, and I, I just look at to see what headspace the guys are in. I mean, one guy can have a poor attitude, and it could just destroy the whole, you know, the whole day can be destroyed. Just uh, the whole game can be, the whole spirit of the game can be destroyed because of one moment. I, I said, I think in there, that I'm not willing to lose a game because the floor is slippery. And, and we've all played on, you know, as a basketball player, we played on the slippery floor or <laughs> I don't know what some conditions, some conditions that we had control over, you know, like maybe, uh, you know, our our equipment manager gave us a tight shirt and that tight mm -hmm. shirt just made us uncomfortable or a shirt that's too loose or, you know, all those things I think are important to put us in a good headspace. And uh, me. The way we play and and how we like the freedom of of our conditioning and on, in the speed in which we play, I think it's important to make sure our floor is not dusty. Otherwise, we'll slide all over the place. We like to get out and you know everybody does. We like to get out in the stance. We cut hard. We 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 think you know we like to say our reactions are going to be better than than our opponents. And if the floor is slippery. And we don't have prop, you know, the grip and all that. Then I, I just, it just feels like it kind of minimizes our advantage. It takes away some of our advantage. And that happened, you know, a time or two when, you know, that happened, man. And I was super frustrated. Uh, you know, it just put us in a bad headspace. We're trying to defend and cut people off and play intense and hard. And the floor is slippery. And guess what? If the guys get wide and in the stands, they'll pull a groin. And uh, you can feel that you can sense that. And, uh, it, it, you, it's kind of a natural feeling. Like they felt like the floor floor was slippery. So if I widen my stance and I slide, I'm gonna pull a groin. So they were kind of protecting themselves. And so they couldn't really give, give all out. And I never want the players to feel vulnerable, uh, in a sense that they can't compete at the highest level. And I think that's just one thing that, that happens, uh, that, that you can control. That's one thing that you could control to help them uh, focus on competing. Uh, you could take away the focus if that floor is it's not slippery. And what's interesting is I can remember uh, I was in high school and I started out playing JV or something like that in order uh, to travel with the varsity or to be with the varsity, I had to, well, to stay in practice. I wanted to play so bad, you know, this is when the city was good, was super good. <laughs> now everybody's all spread out. They go to Catholic and private schools, but the city in LA was super good, man. And so you would, you weren't just hopping on varsity. So in order to be with the team, I had to kind of be like the manager of the varsity. And so I was like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I wanted to be in it in that space so bad. And part of it was they were kind of testing me like, well, okay, do the floor. And so the guy who the the adult who normally did it, he showed me how to do it. And it's crazy. All of the things that God places in your life, like I'm a I'm an absolute profession. I know that the, 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 
the the seasons. I know when the wind is blowing. I know the <laughs> I know everything. I could probably write a book on how to do the floor and the details of you know some days you won't you know when the floor is moist. I mean you some days you can you cannot do the floor for a week. You know there's a certain temperature where the floor just has a, a level of of grip. And then in the summertime, it can be, we get that dry heat and you got to do the floor like every six hours. It's crazy. So uh, there's a feel. And I had that and I had to do the floor. And I just, I just think, you know, that, that, uh, that's something that I try to show people how to do it. And then they get out there. Yeah, 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 coach, I got it. And then they do it and they mess it up. And I'm like, you know what? Never mind, bro. Sometimes if you want it done, you want it done right. You just do it yourself. And even with the machine, man, people don't do it right. They just run through it quick and they don't understand, it's, you know, I'm just down to the lines and the space and somebody, I, am I OCD? Yeah, probably, you know, <laughs> uh, but there's, there's, if you're going to do it, you might as well just do it right. It takes the same effort and the same time to do it right. So do it right. You know, doing it right and wrong, it takes the same effort. So just do it right. And uh, it, it, that kind of goes for everything. You might as well do it right. Uh, yeah, and, and it creates a good vibe. And and then also I've learned that the players even, they respect it. And it, it feels like, okay, coach is not too small. I don't do it for that reason. Mm -hmm. I do it because I want it done right. And I'd rather just do it because everybody comes and says, coach, let me do that. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, bro, because I already know I'm going to get upset. <laughs> because I want practice to be done right. I want, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes practice, I'll let uh, some other people do it. But when it comes game time, I'm doing the floor uh, without, a, without a doubt. Game time and when it's important practices, I'm doing the floor. And I want to make sure it's done right. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that makes sense. And, and, and what you're talking about, like the like like the vibe and you talking about just things being done the right way. Talk a little bit about your staff with, with, with Coach Ken and Coach Rock, because you you have put together just like you're talking about before. You're saying that, you know, people people want to put together a dream team. And I and mm -hmm. I feel that you have your own dream team because I I also was was a team manager before I played on the team. And I, I just see where their hearts are. Just just talk about them a little bit and why, why just why it, it all yeah. works so well. Yeah. You know what I, I, I like to do is I think immediately what we do. I, the good part about us is I get to try out the coaches. Right. So or the coaches get to kind of do a tryout. <laughs> so because it's not like I have to sign a. I got to sign a, uh, the guys have to sign a contract and they get this big salary and all that. So a lot of ours is volunteer base and they get a little bit of a stipend, right? So they get a little bit of a stipend. I can tell the guys like, look, man, this job, it doesn't pay much. If you want to be a part of it, if you want to come coach, then what I would say is come in the summer, just come hang out and take a look, right? Literally the coaches come in, they eliminate themselves. They realize like, oh, oh, this is a grind. This is, this is crazy. And eventually they kind of, kind of slowly, yeah, coach, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do it. It doesn't look like my schedule is going to work out. <laughs> Guys like coach Rob, who literally is worth hundreds of thousands. Like he's worth on a high, he had lost his high school job, but he was a coach. Like he was a grinder. He grinded at the level that he was at. And so when he mentioned like, hey, coach, I think I want to come work for you. I'm looking at what he's done and what I know, I know what he had to do. So I'm like, come in. Plus, he's he's secure with himself. He doesn't need to try to overstep Coach Mosley. He's like, man, I've had success at where I've had and da 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 da. And man, I'm just here because I'm I'm uh, I know that if I come now from the high school and come to the college, junior college level that I can build relationships and move on. So Coach Rob comes in and immediately he gravitates to the to the adversity. He gravitates to the. He was like, "Oh, I'm jumping right in. This is what coaches is all coaching is all about." So you see, some coaches they'll come and I get to kind of you know they get to I get to try them out and they jump into the adversity. They jump in. They embrace the grind. And then there's some that step away. We're like, "Wait a minute, I didn't know we had to do all this to coach." And I'm like, well, coaching ain't nothing but 10%. And so I've been fortunate enough to be able to take a look at guys. I, I never really, I never say no or say that. Yes, 
I, because really it's almost like a volunteer thing. I'm like, man, yeah, just come and take a look. And if you embrace the grind, then I encourage you to, yeah, man, I'm, let me encourage you. And here's what stipend I can give you. But there's some guys that come in and they look around and they think they just going to jump out there and say, okay, jump, stop. And you need to do this and you need to do that. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not that way, man. And we just sit back in the summertime and we work the guys out and it's, and they see all the problems and I'm like, Hey coach, can you, you want to go take him home and drive him an hour and a half home? And then they see the grind and like, Oh, okay. This is uh this ain't what I signed up for, but that's what it's about is the sacrifices you make. You know, coach Rob, he's driving from Riverside and which is about an hour and a half with traffic. And then he goes to pick up a guy and takes a guy home. And, you know, a guy, we had a young man, you know, he may show up in this, you know, if we do another docuseries again, but he was in a car accident, car flipped over, the jaws of life had to tear him out. They didn't show that in the docu. You know, mm -hmm. Coach Rob was picking him up and did, you know, there's so many things that, and he's taking joy in it because he understands the grind. And then he can see the light at the end of the tunnel and what it means to have a program. If you want to have a program, then there's sacrifices that's going to be have to have, have to be made. And so once I've seen that, the, 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 it's a dream team. Once you find guys who understand that there's going to that all the investment is going to come from us. You know, you can't assume you're just going to show up and have great players and you're going. Yeah, look at me. I'm on a winning team and I got I'm wearing the the Nike polo, you know, you walk, you, you know, you just want to wear the polo with the logo and you want to tuck, you know, you want to wear the belt and tuck your shirt in and you want to be on the sidelines throwing up the two fingers and all, man, that is, that is not coaching, man. That is not half of the time. I'm daydreaming when I'm coaching a, uh, I'm coaching a game, you know, I'm not even thinking, I'm like, that's the easy part. I'm coaching the game. I'm sitting here daydreaming, man. Like, Man, what is going on? Like, okay, uh, run this play, run that play. The mo the time that I'm most engaged is in practice. Like during a game, what the hell am I doing? Like, what am I doing? They're playing. Like, I'm not doing nothing, man. It's just like pretending coaching when you're in the game. I may have to really do something. Man, I may like five times in the game. I may have to call a timeout to, to, you know, for momentum purposes. Do a couple substitutions, and I may have to draw up a play. Usually. What every five games, you got to make a decision at the end of a game. Most of the time, the game is decided by we're either up by ten or we're down by ten. You know, uh, there's very few times where I, I got to make a decision in the last thirty seconds. Like every five games, so like, what am I actually doing? Nothing. I'm like daydreaming, man, coaching. It's like the the engagement comes during practice, and that's what true coaches realize is when you're in practice is when when you got to individually connect with the players and spend time with them on their personal lives and all that, that's coaching, man. The, the game part is the easy part. That, that part is like, that's not, it's not even fun because I'm daydreaming about the problems that the kid got. I'm on the sideline coaching with my suit and tie on and I'm not even thinking about the game. I'm thinking about the, the all the other issues that's going on off the court, you know? So really game time, I'm pretending like I'm coaching, you know, hopefully you have everything in to where you don't even have to coach I mean, you know, uh, and I hope I don't offend any coaches out there, but uh, I don't know. I, I just it's a pet peeve of mine to have the clipboard. So as you see, I, I don't ever have a clipboard. You know, the time. You know, hope I don't offend any coaches. But you call a timeout, and then all of a sudden you grab the clipboard, and I'm like, what the hell am I grabbing a clipboard for? We should know everything, right? Uh, the only time I'll grab it is if I, I there's 30 seconds left. We got to get a shot off, and I just remind them everything else. We should have it should be a habit. But I want to make sure I remind them why, because it's a it's a stressful pressure situation and the guys could forget because uh, it's more stressful because it's the last shot of the game or something. But I'd never grab a clip. It's just it, it, for me, it's irritating. Why am I going to grab a clipboard in halftime? Well, he's not coaching. Well, I should have coached in practice. That's what should have happened. I should have did my coaching in practice. I should have they sh I should have drawn up all the plays in practice. I'm not going to draw it up in a game, man. Like, what the heck am I doing? So anyway, hopefully that didn't offend any coaches, but I really, that that's a pet peeve. I I'm, I get irritated when a coach goes and grabs a clipboard when I, you know, I'm not grabbing a clipboard. They should already know. I should say, okay, here's what we're going to run when we go here. All right. This is what we're going to run. So anyway. 
Fair enough, Coach. Fair enough. Coach, now now, now we're going to go ahead and slide, slide to the two-minute drill. I'm going to let, let you go ahead and get out of here. We're going to slide to the two-minute drill. Mm-hmm. And uh, for everybody who this might be your first time, and Coach Mosley, I'm going to let you in on it. Uh, the two-minute drill is where we're going to just do some rapid-fire questions. And then, you know, just let people just see see a different side of you. And, and then we're going to wrap it up, put a bow on it, and then we'll we'll send you on your way. So, so Coach, are you, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Let's get to it. Here we go. Favorite food? La, lasagna, meat lasagna. Mm, okay, okay. What's the what's the last book you read? A servant leader. Well, the Bible. But if, if, if besides the Bible, it was a, a servant leader. Okay. Bible, okay. Bible, yeah. What's the what's the most underrated cereal? Captain Crunch. Regular or Crunch Berries? Or what are we talking? No, we talking about regular. Okay. We talking about regular. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what's your what's your go to streaming show of preference? Oh, this guy, it's last chance you right. No, no, no. It's last chance you just started to be, but uh uh I would have to say uh my wife can't stand me watching with office though. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay, yeah. okay. And what's your what's your favorite verse? What's your favorite verse from the Bible? Uh my favorite verse. Uh, I would probably say we are more more than conquerors. Uh, yeah, we are more than conquerors. Okay, okay, excellent, excellent. And then la- last question I got for you. Well, la- last question, but what, what's what's one tip you want to give to a student athlete? You got to keep grinding. Uh, I think a lot of times we we're in the microwave era where we want it quick and fast. Don't believe the hype on social media when you see someone having this great, phenomenal career. It's not true. Uh, when we talk talk about it, we're talking about from a student athletic, don't believe the hype on all the hype videos and the videos and different things like that. I think the most important thing is to, to be true to yourself and know where you're at and the space you're at. It's gonna take work. Uh, it's not gonna take a video editor. It's not gonna be able to do it for you. It's gonna take work and you gotta grind every day. And you gotta be true to yourself and understand that it's gonna take uh, work. You gotta wake up in the morning and you gotta do extra. There's somebody that looks just like you out there that's trying to outplay you. They, they're just the same height, just as quick, just as uh, athletic, just as smart, just as intelligent. What's gonna separate you? The only thing that's gonna separate you is the work that you put in. Don't kid yourself. Everything it takes to be successful in life is a grind. There's probably less than 1% someone who's been handed something or, or handed success. Uh, other than that, it's gonna take it's gonna take work, and that's in everything you do. You gotta wake up and grind. If you want to be a lawyer, doctor, heck, you want to be a, a police officer, a firefighter, the test and everything you gotta do is gonna take a grind. It's gonna take work, putting your head down in the sand and getting it done. There it is. There it is. And then, coach, who's who's one who's one guest that you'd like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? One guest. Uh, go, go, go get coach Rob Robinson and, and, and get coach Rob Robinson on, oh, beyond the ball, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. Coach, go ahead. Please, please let everybody know where they can, where they can connect you, where they can connect with you. And then also please, please let, let us know just how we can support you and just, just the work that you're doing. Well, since I'm on social media now, I never really believed in it, but they kind of told me, Hey, you, you got some people that want to follow you. So, uh, I'm at coach. John Mosley underscore Elac. That's on my uh, Instagram. And then uh, Twitter is John Mosley Jr. Uh, you can find me on Twitter there. And uh, so we got a follow in there. And then I got some link trees and I got a website that's coming up that'll all be connected to those social media pages. And it can connect you to our athletic department where you can follow what we're doing as a team. But those link trees for now, they have uh, just all the spaces on how you can connect and how you can support us. Uh, there's some that ask for gear, some that want to, you know, donate in small ways, big ways. We all have that there on my social media link tree. Excellent. Excellent. Well, well Coach Mosey, I want to I thank you for taking time to, to hang out with the ballers today and just, you know, add, add so much value, sharing your story, sharing your, your life with us. Uh, so I definitely appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
So all the all the ballers out there, all the ballers out there, I would encourage you all to make sure that you subscribe to the podcast on YouTube to to get not only the podcast, but also exclusive video content. In addition to that, I would encourage you to subscribe if you're listening on Apple and then leave a rate and review if you found uh, this episode helpful or any of the other episodes that you have heard. And friends, thank you for, for hanging out. And once again, my name is Jonathan Jones. This is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.